one young man came to me 2017 when I was doing prayer meeting. I started prayer meeting and the name of, I think the name of that one is dead that wait upon the Lord. The young man came in, stood by the door and said, I have a teaching for you people. Uh -uh. He said he wants to teach us joy in the Holy Ghost. The guy was sweating. I looked at the guy, I knew hmm, that he doesn't know what he's teaching. He has not sat down to pay the price to house what he believes, assuming it's true. What you believe, you're supposed to serve your generation. If you don't accumulate it, you don't have business in ministry. What are you doing now? Somebody came to my, one of my social media pages and said, all these pastors, that they are fake. That they are just collecting people's offering and, and eating it. I don't blame the guy. The guy myself, no, no, say, I know they collect offering. Ah, I wish I'm, I'm shopping your offering. If he said that, I would say, hey, I will now come and defend myself. So sometimes I don't blame those guys saying that thing because in our time it looks as if ministry is lucrative. So if somebody enters ministry, maybe a young minister, and then you suffer, suffer small, suffer small, the person will run to you and tell you, Apostle, ministry is no more working. What am I going? I feel like giving up. I, I feel like I have tried this. I have prayed for one year. I have done this thing. Uh -uh. How do people do ministry before? It means they did not update you. They did not update you on what is actually ministry before you started. And probably you called yourself, God didn't call you. If you check where, you will find out that 70% of those people you are seeing, both physically and on social media, they call themselves, or human beings call them, or their friends call them, or their association call them, because three or four, there are five. Four is not answering apostles, so they now call themselves. Are you getting the point? So what we have is many self-called people. The truth is that when there is a shaking, the people that are not called, they will just fall off. It's either they fall off or they become the, re the problem in the body of Christ. The reason why I'm doing this thing is to discourage you. Hmm? <laughs> is to what? So that if God did not call you, you are, you are a skillful young man. Is it not true? Is it not true? You can do many things. You can do public speaking. Let it not be that the reason why you are tilting toward being a pastor now is because public speaking never give you 10 million. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. There are many people tilting towards becoming a pastor. It, it, mm -mm. Mm -mm. They go hammer you soon. And you come and say, God, what God told me, why is my own different? You will come and say, it's foundation that is fighting. It's not foundation. There is suffering. There is suffering. There is a location of suffering in this calling. Like suffering, I mean, is that I go, yeah, I go get one name. I go, like, like not, not hunger for God. <laughs> the hunger I'm talking about is not hunger for God. The hunger I'm talking about is real hunger. You know that hunger? No food. You will do three, four days dry fasting, use Gary and break it. That's if you see any Gary self. And it's not something you do and say, next year we are going to blow. You might stay like that for the next five, ten years. They didn't tell you. They did not tell you. Go and find something to do. I want to discourage, because there are many fake people now entering into our midst, saying that God called them. God did not call them. 
The reason why I'm telling you is that there will be a, a shaking. You know, some people, they prophesy and say that God will bless us, money will come. No. There will be a shaking. God wants to put his hand upon his genuine ministers. And I'm trying to save you from the catastrophe. It seems as if I'm teaching, but I'm not teaching. I'm prophesying to you. Hmm? We want to be sure whether God called you. God we say, is it not your business that crashed and you started dressing like man of God? Come, sit down. No calling. You can be a very good believer, powerful, anointed, and still be doing what you are doing. Is it not true? Yes. But you are already thinking of opening a branch. Opening, they did not call you. They did not call you. They did not. <laughs> I'm warning you. I'm warning you. They did not call you. Eh? Resign. Resign. Put in your resignation. Go and continue your work. Go and continue what you need to you used to do. Continue your public speaking. Continue your music ministry. They did not call you. <laughs> they did not. You know this thing I'm saying? It's a, it's a very sharp sword. This thing, it will echo in the heart of anybody that hears it. <laughs> I know you think I'm saying normal words. No. These are cooked. I want to save our generation so that when you see such people, you run away. Once you share one or two revelations, share one or two revelations on Facebook, share, 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 then the people following you increase. Then you organize a meeting. Then they now start calling you man of God. And you start up are appearing on flyer and all that. Should I tell you, it's social media, Facebook that called you. It's social media that what? Called you. If you notice that once they shake you like this, you want to give up, you want to stop. You are not called. If you see the man that is called, when you shake him, what he uses to check is not what you are using to check. If I enter a difficult circumstance, the first thing I check, first thing, is I check whether the presence of God is still there with me. If he is there, one. I will not stop there. I will check whether there is grace. If you are passing through a tough time or something hard is happening to you, and you notice that you prayed, it did not change, but you are noticing an increase in grace. Leave it. Your suffer is part of it. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, just suffer, just suffer. <laughs> just suffer, it's part of it. You will cry many times. I'm not telling you what has not happened to me. Oh. I have cried and told God, you see, me, I know what I know they do again. I told God, I'm on my own. You called me. What is this thing? I spoke, spoke grammar, spoke grammar, spoke grammar, spoke, spoke. After speaking, I ended it with, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry. I repent. That's always how it happens. How many of you it has happened to you? You were angry, you were accusing me, accusing me. When you now feel, you now realize, oh, make this man not take me seriously. <laughs> You now started apologizing, saying sorry. <laughs> we have all been there. <laughs> we have been there. We have been there. We have been there. Something can happen. Situation can come. And you expect God to come through for you because of the way you have been faithful and serving him. He left you. Nothing happened. And the other one that is gallivanting and jiving everywhere. Just prayed, ma, 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 so, la, te. And God quickly answered. He said, God, what is this? Hmm? The reason why you still continued is because everybody has known you as a woman of God. If you have option, you will escape. Well, you, who will you tell now? 
If, if you tell people tomorrow that you are no more interested, they will not believe you. They, because, are you getting the point? You have gone too far in it that they will no more believe you. Who called you? Who called you? Who called you? Sit down. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Some people, is, is fellowship in school that called them. Yeah. You are not with me. Fellowship called them and they became fellowship president. Became JCCL president. Then started ministry. Yeah. It's fellowship that called you, oh man of God. You need to resign. Go and start bank job. You would have become an MD by now. Let me change my message. You see, in this week, seven kinds of miracle will come to you in Jesus' name. You see, there is something your pastor has not told you. Every Sunday he's making declaration. He has not told you that he can only pray. He is not humble enough to tell you that his power is only in praying. That there is another person that answers. And the real power is not necessarily in the person praying, but in the person what? Answer. Our prayer is powerful not because of our praying, but because of Jesus Christ. Who called you? Who called you? Who called you even to music ministry? Make it no be say you wash one tasha cups and then cried with her and say we have kindred spirit. And then you are forcing yourself to become one tasha cups. You know who called you now? YouTube video, YouTube, YouTube video called you. Huh? YouTube video, what? Called you. <laughs> <laughs> According to the plans you have for your ministry now, you know how far you would have been now. Ako. Let's call name now. Hmm? You would have been a, one of the fastest young rising ministers in one of the topmost churches in Nigeria, frontline churches. Say the truth, you would have had car now. You would have had house now. Your wife would have given birth to at least one child now. Is it not true? I want to ask, who called you? Is your ambition that called you? Your ambition what? You just checked. You see, massive ministry is the fastest way to achieve your ambition. So you put your leg inside. I said, I want, I'm here to discourage you so that it will remain one or two that are called. So as soon as you enter ministry, you are hoping that after one or two years, you will now blow, finances will change, things will change. What if nothing changed in five years? And your mother, your father, everybody is putting pressure on you. What are you going to do? Many years after graduating, I did not make money. In fact, they technically disowned me. My sisters are here. I can't tell you my story. It's not good to be heard outside. I just decided not to say those things. As you are seeing me here, I'm very deep. Oh, I have a lot of secrets I will die with. And you will never know. I will not behave. I will never relate based on what I know. But I know I know a lot. In fact, sometimes it seems as if I know more than I should know. Hmm? I will cry in secret. Cry, cry, cry. When I finish, I will think if I cry like that, God will say, My son. Oh, you name Megi Ifa. Let me showcase you to your world. When I finish, I will still go and meet one of my brothers those days. In different seasons. Come and meet him. Come and tell me. 
Pastor, you never shop. You never shop, Pastor. So after me, Pastor, you never shop. <laughs> I didn't hear you. So after me, Pastor, pastor. you never shop. Ask the pastor beside you. <laughs> Tell the pastor beside you, in this calling, you will be hungry. You, you did not say what I'm telling you. Talk to that man. Talk to people. Tell the person, in this calling, you will be hungry. When I know tell on herself, he said, you know why? This man is already a big man. So I'm not sure he has, I'm not sure he is called to our kind of calling. He, he didn't have opportunity to suffer. You will not become anything useful in God's hand without suffering. You must suffer. It's not optional. <laughs> Huh? Your anointing is to make people succeed so much that there will be no trouble. There is no, there is no such anointing in heaven. In fact, sometimes if you are anointed, you begin to suffer because you are anointed. You are not suffering before. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, you are not suffering before. Nothing was happening. No warfare, no contention when you are normal. That's what the scripture spoke about David. He said that when, as soon as they anointed David king, Eh? The Philistines came to what? Fight him. He was normal. Nothing was happening until they anointed him. Then his trouble began. We will not run away from it. For each face that you are able to yield to and pass, God will form his nature in you using that process. What did I say? For each face that you yield to and submit to God will form his nature using that process. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. Based on this evidence on ground, fasting Grace is not a proof that you are called. Should I even tell you now? The prayer grace is not a proof that you are called. The Bible study grace and teaching grace is not a proof that you are called. Hmm? Just because you have fasted for long, in fact, you are anointed is not a proof that you are called. God can anoint. That thing that was on Saul that came on him and he prophesied, what was it? It's anointing. It's not, it's not. If you are not able to submit to the suffering that will make you, then probably will suspect your calling. That's assuming you are called. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. Is my teaching too hard? But it's hard anyway. Yes, mm -hmm. So, that voice telling you, my son, my son, my son, I have made you a voice to nations. And then you come and pray it. And then you say, we have a voice. We are God is taking you. We are God is taking you. You don't know that that thing you are saying we, is uh, the thing that will put you in trouble, put you to where nobody will see you. Because that's what it takes for you to be made. See, everywhere is quiet now. Hmm? As soon as you started telling people you are called, you began to suffer. Because you need to prove your calling through that suffering. To your immediate family, you have not proved to them that what bound them is no more binding you. And you said that they sent you to nations. Go and sit down. Have you convinced your mother? It's after me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Help me, I beg. Help me, I 